the start of a new day in Lokalama in the Democratic Republic of Congo. <coughs> Behind the village is dense swampland. Satellite images have revealed the existence of a peat bog here in the forest. Biologists say it's one of the most important ever discovered. That's why a team of British and Congolese scientists have embarked on a joint research project. Getting to the peat bog involves an arduous, hours-long hike through the swamp. Everything is soaking wet. English geographer Simon Lewis has been surveying here for years, trying to better understand the development of the bog, which began forming tens of thousands of years ago. Made up of decomposed plant material, the peat held some surprises for the researcher. This is peat. So this is the partially decomposed plant matter that uh, is a store of carbon. So this is now uh, sampled every 50 centimetres and this is two metres to three metres deep. But what is a surprise is that we thought the peat here would be maybe 50 centimetres, maybe one metre maximum. And actually we've got much deeper peat. So that suggests that potentially, we haven't done all the work yet, but potentially there's even more carbon stored on this side of the Congo River. The scientists now calculate that the bog is far bigger and deeper than they originally estimated. The peat layer is up to six metres thick in places and covers an area about the size of Great Britain. That's why maintaining the area is so important for the environment. As you see, there is the, surrounding the forest. So the yeah. forest is also store, uh, storing the carbon, stocking the carbon. So it's double stocking yeah. carbons above ground biomass, turning it to carbon and also the underlying deposit. And so if you wipe this forest, that's, we are double times releasing the carbon, more carbon in the atmosphere. The forests of the Congo Basin are under ever increasing pressure. Similar primeval woodlands in Asia have already disappeared and deforestation is now also a threat in this part of Africa. Illegal loggers are taking down more and more trees. Meanwhile, the government is granting licenses, some, according to environmental groups, under dubious circumstances. But as local populations grow, so does the need for arable land. To plant cassava, for instance. Farmers like Valentin Agobo say they have no choice. To acquire new fields, they say, they have to drain at least some of the moors. We have to maintain a balance between preserving nature and survival. Yes, we need alternatives to deforestation, but it's not that easy. There are no projects in place to help people pursue other livelihoods. That's why the environmental organization Greenpeace has stepped in to support the scientists financially and logistically, and to teach the villagers more about why environmental protection is vital. A government official explains the difficulties the country is facing. We would have to provide aid to the people here so they don't take resources from the forest. But such projects cost money, money the government doesn't have. That's why we need the financial support of the international community. The activists say it's imperative to develop a strategy that provides financial support for the entire region. Otherwise, the Congolese authorities will continue to permit logging, which will eventually lead to the release of vast amounts of sequestered CO2. We need to find international solutions, not only to help these countries protect these primeval forests, but also to further study the peat bogs in order to protect them, because they contain huge amounts of carbon. There are some 30 billion tons of carbon trapped in there. That's the equivalent of three years of total global emissions from coal, oil and gas combined. The scientists have finished for the day, but it'll take months to record and analyse all the data they've collected, providing more insights into one of the largest carbon reservoirs on the planet.